Hi guys, welcome back. It's UK here for another vid. Uh, this is a response to uh, Disavowal's uh, Gaming 101 video, which I watched earlier this afternoon, which was uh, quite interesting um, and thought-provoking. Uh, the idea being that if you were a professor of uh, the role-playing arts, what game systems would you have your players uh, study, read, um, and basically take in as the important ones in role-playing? Um, and I think that's quite an interesting topic because there's going to be so many different uh, points of view uh, from pe people. Um, now, Disavowal is a huge great big list of games. I don't think I would do quite as many as that um, because I think while pretty much he covers a, a wide spectrum of games, I think there are quite a few that he mentions that I just don't think had that sort of impact on role-playing. Um, I would start with the basic uh, red box D&D plus first edition AD&D. Uh, I think because without those, I mean obviously you, know, you don't know the what ifs, but I think without those I don't think role playing would have taken off or become popular. Uh, that's assuming, you know, because I mean everyone looks at D&D as the first game, um, but when it just after it was released in that initial uh, run you got a few more published and you know there but for the grace of the gods someone else could have become the the truly dominant uh, role playing game of the uh, 70s, 80s and 90s and I think that AD&D, first edition basic D&D brought people in uh, because at the time you had uh, in the literary circles a lot of uh, role play, a lot of uh, fantasy sorry um, and I think it kind of sparked people's interests and it went along with that and it basically blossomed. Um, the basic D&D shows you how to do, how you can do a really basic rule system but still make it really fun and proves to me that you don't have to have uh, a, an annoyingly complex set of rules. You can just have a really basic set of rules and the game will run fine. But after a time, you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to change. You're going to want to take that next step up. And whereas first edition, I think, was horribly complicated, uh, I've got all my first edition books still in the cupboard. Every so often, I take them out and have a good bit of the old uh, nostalgia reading through it. But there's no way in hell I could read that. I could run those games again now. Not first edition. Uh, I just it's the system is just far too clunky. But it shows you where you could go from that basic game, and it shows you how you could have a fantasy world uh, at the time. Then second edition AD and D, because this is where I think TSR fixed the issues with um, first edition. I think that uh, the game system becomes much more streamlined. It shows you that you can still have that advanced set of rules, but with a basic mechanic. Uh, I think also that uh, the, um, I suppose if we look at it, the artwork uh, improves. First edition had terrible artwork, second edition has some really dodgy artwork and it kind of goes to show you the sort of stuff you don't want on your on your books because I think the chainmail bikini uh, artwork was far too co uh, relevant <laughs> or prevalent rather is the way I think of um, and I think that kept a lot of uh, women out of the game because they looked at it and went oh, it's for guys uh, sort of thing which is a shame but I definitely think that mechanically wise second edition shows you as I said you can still have that advancedness but it doesn't have to be too dissimilar from the simple basic system that you started with uh, third I would say Call of Cthulhu uh, not only is it an absolutely awesome game um, it comes from a literary source, and I recommend everybody read that literary source as well as play the game. Um, but also it shows you how, I think, correctly to run a horror role-playing game. Um, it's true that a lot of the early module, uh, source books and modules, the scenarios were very D&D-ish, unfortunately, with one room has got a deep one in it, another room's got a cultist, another room's got a shot off. Um, but since that point, in the very early 80s, the game has gone jumped in leaps and bounds. It's now an absolutely awesome game. 
but yes it shows you how to run a horror game properly it's got a simple series of mechanics again um, that are easy to learn uh, easy to explain to new players um, and it does the job of having a uh, let's call it an established setting and shows you how to implement that into the game system almost. Uh, because you, know, you don't have to do the typical all the characters are going to die or go insane you can run it as a horror game but still set within uh, Lovecraft's universe uh, so it has a little bit of diversion but uh, thirdly I think we have to go with White Wolf's uh, Vampire the Masquerade uh, because this one I have to agree with Disenvowel here I think this was one of the games to bring more female players into the hobby um, I think it was for its time I think very eye-opening uh, because suddenly you weren't playing you weren't necessarily playing the hero you weren't playing the superhero sort of thing you were playing the monster but you were still grounded in the real world um, and the fact that rather than going around uh, dungeon stomping and slaughtering monsters you had a fully fleshed out at least as the books went along uh, society and so the game required a lot more intrigue and uh, hence for the players it required a lot more thought it also required a lot more role play because uh, I think of any role playing game I've ever played the White Wolf's World of Darkness games old and new have required players to be that much more in character and to slip into that role a lot more. You can easily play most role playing games by essentially playing yourself if you really want to. I never felt you could do that with uh, Vampire in the World of Darkness games, uh, so I think this one gets big thumbs up for really supporting the role play a lot. Um, it does have a couple of negative points though, I think. One is that. Well, again, one I think is that you still have the, you still have this problem of the in, uh, as I said the intrigue and the immersion and the uh, politicking. You've got to be able to think, and if you've got a GM or storyteller as they call him that, and a player and, or players who don't quite fit that, they're never quite going to get the game. Um, I've known people who are consummate power gamers to try and play that game, and they can't do it because you can't min max the way. Uh, you could even say modern D&D or something because the game isn't about that it's about role playing, it's about being the intrigue, it's about thinking through as your character uh, so I think it's not open to everybody um, I also think it's the sort of game that unfortunately if you don't quite get it you won't enjoy it, when I first played uh, or went to GM uh, back in first edition and bear in mind, it was probably only a year, two years after it came out I had a hell of a trouble actually working out how to play it because it was kind of like you needed some of those extra books to explain the vampire society and we actually gave up playing the game after only a couple of months because we couldn't get our heads around how the society was supposed to work or what you did after all you're vampires you wake up um, you go off and uh, kill people or feed on people and you go back to sleep for the day uh, it didn't quite click until there's that moment you go boom aha I get it now um, so I think that one does have its negatives, but overall, the positives in that game I think have done the uh, hobby gaming industry brilliantly. Uh, what else can I say? What other games would I pick on here? Um, definitely Rollmaster. Uh, I know people have a love-hate relationship with this particular game, but I think it gave you a good opposition to D&D. I think uh, that Rollmaster gave you a system that was fairly complex, um, but for people that wanted more than D&D offered in its mechanics, uh, who liked the crunching of the numbers, who liked all that sort of thing, I think it was a good uh, jumping point from D&D to our then other role fantasy role-playing systems. Um, unfortunately, it's the sort of game that doesn't fit all fantasy settings, uh, we used it primarily for Middle Earth, oddly enough, and it seemed to actually work quite well, Rollmaster, for that. But, um, oddly, I'm not quite sure how. 
but I would certainly include it for that as a decent jumping off point to then other games, uh, like RuneQuest or what have you, depending on your various, uh, whatever your taste was. Um, what else would I say it was a game for the era, uh, for the hobby rather? Um, I wasn't going to include this actually, this came to mind, but definitely I think uh, 3rd edition D&D. And the reason it suddenly comes to mind is the OGL, the Open Gaming Licence. If you, regardless of the love-hate that some people have for the D20 mechanic, which I think is a really good mechanic, as much as um, you can power game it considerably once you, you, you understand the modularization of it, where this affects this, this affects that, boom, 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 you can create something truly uh, twinky. Um, the open gaming license was an awesome boost, at least initially, I think, to the hobby industry, because it meant that anyone, you, me, or any of the uh, established companies out there, could uh, write and then publish material for third edition Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and yes, we had a huge glut in the early days, with so many companies throwing things out there. But I think that was a huge boost because someone out there might publish a source book that Wizards of the Coast would never have considered. Um, or someone who wanted to publish their campaign setting could do it, even if they just did it as a PDF rather than an actual physical um, product. It gave the opportunity to do that. So I think I'm going to include uh, third edition purely on the grounds of that. Um, <coughs> pardon me. What else can we come up with for this? Um, Disenval mentioned the Star Wars D6 system from West End Games. Um, now, I wouldn't probably include that, but I know from back in the day there were people I, uh, who I knew who got into role playing purely because of that because they were Star Wars fans and this gave them an op uh, something else. It wasn't just like computer games or playing with the action figures with no kids, you know. Um, and they got into that, and although I'm not a big fan of that system mechanic that was used, it meant that people did come in uh, who might not have otherwise thought of role-playing games and spread out into other games. Um, whereas I don't think any of the other, at the time, uh, systems or games built on a, uh, what's the word, uh, a pre-existing sort of like setting, you know, we've got the Star Wars universe is what I mean by that, I can't think of the term that I want to use. Um, because you had that, you had, you had opened the doors to other people, and as I said, those people might stick with that game because that's all they want to play, but other people might be intrigued to move on to other games. So yes, I would definitely include that. Um, I'm not sure what other games have probably done it, to be fair, which is probably a little bit of a disservice um, at the time, um, because in the 80s, 90s, I was very much myself just a D&D player, um, uh, World of Darkness, Call of Cthulhu, you know. Uh, I, I dabbled in other games, but I think there are many games out there which I think, while very popular, didn't really add anything to the hobby in general. Um, you know, you had the superhero games, uh, Marvel superheroes, based on advanced from TSR. I think while well, that again may have brought people in, I think that was much more. Those sort of games were more for people who wanting who played D and D were wanting something different. I'm not sure from uh, reading Dragon Magazine or any of the f or short-lived role-playing magazines that we at least got here in the UK. You never really heard of people playing it, um, whereas a lot of other games you did. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I think those are probably my. These are the ones that have Im impacted the hobby gaming industry the most, or the role playing industry the most, rather. Um,